Okay, we are live. So David, thank you so much for joining me. I know you're on vacation and traveling and uh, I feel very privileged that you made some time for me today. <laughs> well, I'm excited. We had, we had an uh, amazing time here on vacation with Costas. Whenever you call and especially when you want to talk about strategy, man, I, I, I'm always here. So uh, I, I'm excited about it. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Um, I know you're gonna we're we're gonna have a really concise, really targeted conversation right now because you have a flight to catch. Um, so let's just dig right in. And let me ask you, David. When uh, you know, I know you you are very seasoned in your career. You've been you've been in business for years and years. You've had all the experiences anyone could have. When did you realize that targeting your prospects uniquely? Um, would make a big difference. Do you have like a, a point in your career where you really realize that? And, and just tell me a little about that. I, I did. Uh, <laughs> interesting enough, I actually sent um, the wrong proposal to the wrong company, and uh, and that kind of like overwhelmed me because I was in overwhelm mode of that. <clears throat> what I was doing is I was just. I mean, when you start, you want to go after. You know, you want to make money. You're out there. You're hustling. And uh, so I would work with doctors, dentists, attorneys, florists, uh, copier companies, you know, you name it. I was, I was actually uh, out there just trying to make it happen. And what I realized was is that um, uh, I was making a lot of mistakes by going in that direction because I would, uh, I would call it a dentist and I would say, hey, we really want to get you more customers. And, uh, you know, I didn't realize what I was doing at that point in time. But because I hadn't really targeted, marketed the dentist industry, I didn't know that much about it. And um, so what, what happens is, is when you become kind of all things to all people, then you really don't get a specialization in a specific area. And so um, it kind of dawned on me when I was so overwhelmed that I had actually sent a proposal to the wrong company. And then I just kind of kind of stopped because I, I lost it right then and there. I had, I really realized that, you know what, when it comes to my marketing, I have to stay really organized. I needed a, um, a system that could keep me organized on the front end to how I was marketing. And more importantly, I needed to focus on one or two markets and become an expert in those markets before I even thought about marketing anybody else. And being able to be that expert gave me a few things. Number one is it allowed me to create scarcity uh, when I marketed. So that means um, if I was marketing 10 or 15 dentists at one time, if they said no, my response was really easy. It was saying, no problem, I'm, I'll be talking to Dr. Smith uh, tomorrow and we'll see if, if he's interested in the opportunity of us helping him you know, get more customers. And so, but it also gave me the language and it took about maybe four or five proposals until I heard the same thing over and over again, the same objections, the same issues. I got the language down because I wasn't saying customer, right? I was saying patient. Uh, you know, when you're with an attorney, you're not saying customer, you're saying client. When you're doing a cosmetic dentist, you're saying a case, uh, you know, getting more cases. So there's, there's a lot of lingo that goes on, especially if you're working in the automotive uh, industry. And so I first realized uh, pretty early on, I'd say after six months of really being in the business, that I needed to really focus and get targeted on one or two markets tops. So kind of the key ingredient number one, I think for everybody is to make sure that you're targeting one market and you're going after that one market. You become an expert and known in that market. Um, so yeah, it, it became critical. And I really saw my business, you know, dramatically increase after that. That's wonderful, man. Yeah, I think that's a that's a very familiar story for us entrepreneurs. Um, everybody who's ever gotten started in business has realized that they need to drill down and focus. Otherwise, your message is going to be too thin. Um, my my personal story is very very similar to that. Um, I can I can share that, uh, or I can add that I was paranoid. I knew I needed to pick a niche, but I was paranoid about which one that I should choose. You know, it's kind of like getting married. You don't want to marry the wrong niche. And uh, I just want to encourage everybody who's listening right now that my takeaway, and David, I don't know if you have if you have something to add along this line as well, is that when you market, you don't if if you're not ready to commit to a niche that you have an, an affinity to already or experience with already, then pick a niche and start marketing to it as if you're an expert yeah. in that niche. Don't, you can market to ten different niches at the same time, but when you're talking to a dentist, talk about patients. When you're talking to a lawyer, talk about clients. So. Um, 
if you're in the place where you can focus on just want to be exclusive, then do it. And if you're not, then don't worry, but just realize you have that language. Would, would you agree, David? Oh, a hundred percent. Matter of fact, um, I, I, had, I came up with four criteria um, that I used to make sure that I was going after the right market. And anyway, watching right now can actually use is number one. They, they have to be already spending money. So forget, forget the, the niche for just a second, but qualify the niche is saying, look, I'm, they're already spending money. And so no matter what niche you go after, that's the first question that, uh, that needs to be in the forefront because these are the tough questions and these are the, what separates salespeople from consultants because salespeople want to kind of tiptoe around and they want to buddy buddy and they want to build, you know, kind of rapport and relationship and, and you know, that it's really good salesmanship, nothing wrong with that. But if you're a consultant, a consultant's mindset is my advice makes a difference and you want my advice. I'm going to need no you know what you're doing right now. I would need to know what's working, what's not working for you. I would need to know uh, what you're spending, uh, how much you're spending, and what you're spending it on. That's a consultant mentality. And so it's a big shift from salesperson to consultant. But in order to do that, it really just starts out with asking consulting questions up front. And then you automatically put yourself in the area of consultant with those leads that you're marketing. So that's kind of criteria number one. Criteria number two is they need to have a high value per customer. So for instance, a florist, um, you know, that's like what, 30, 40, 50 bucks a, um, you know, a customer. So whatever marketing you do, a mobile marketing, reputation, PPC, whatever it might be, um, you know, if you're gonna get them 10 customers, well, for a florist, that ends up being, what, 500 bucks. But if you're getting 10 customers for a roofer, you know, that could be $50,000. So go after niches where they have a high impact of, or high per customer acquisition revenue. Um, the, the third criteria is short selling cycles. So look for a niche with a really short selling cycle, meaning I need it now type of selling cycle. So I know a realtor that's gonna sell a house in 90 days or a mortgage broker that's gonna get a mortgage in 90 to 120 days, not a long selling cycle, but a roofer, someone needs a roof today. Someone needs their, you know, appliance repaired today. Someone needs, um, you know, uh, the plumbing today. Someone needs their, you know, car fixed today. So those are very short selling cycles. And the last is typically the ones with traffic, keywords, so that when you are marketing them, there's opportunity to really focus on what they're looking for. So for instance, I've had a lot of um, our customers go after businesses that are national businesses. Now they're, they're in a city, right? They belong in a city, but they're doing gene therapy. Now gene therapy isn't a local keyword. They're really marketing to the, the nation or to potentially the world for that matter. And so, you know, you want to market where in niches that there's a lot of traffic of people typing in, you know, dentist, uh, you know, uh, uh, traffic attorney or accountant or bookkeeper or, you know, spa, um, restaurant, those types of words. So those four, four criteria, really any that you go after, as long as you meet those four criteria, you'll crush it. I love it. I love it. Um, I actually want to go back to the first point that you brought up, which is that a business has to be uh, advertising. You know, they have to be, they, it's better if, they've, if they're already spending money on the type of advertising that you want to sell them, right? Because then right. you don't have to convince them it's important. They already know it's important. So let me ask you, um, what kind of criteria as digital marketers, local marketing consultants, what kind of criteria can we look at so that we can qualify a prospect in advance using some of those criteria, you know? Well, so it's interesting you say, say that because it, I think that's a, you can go a lot of different directions with, it, with that question. So I want to take it in a direction that I think the qualification is, is that um, you can do research on a company upfront to know exactly what type of marketing they're already doing. So for instance, we know if they're in the, the, the three pack of Google, right? So if we're selling SEO services or, or you know, Google Plus ranking, we know if they're in that three pack and there's lots of tools out there. Um, you know, there's tools to figure out if they're ranking on the first page of Google for their, their website. There's lots of tools out there um, that can help you figure out if they've got, you know, you can see, you can take their link and go to uh, a tool that sees if they're mobile optimized or not. You can go to their Facebook page to see how many likes they have and when they've actually posted in the last 30 days. You can go to Google and Yelp and you can take a look at their reputation to see if they need reputation services. 
So one of the qualifications that, um, you know, once they've met that criteria for is, is to know that they've got a problem. And, you know, I've never met a company yet, not even one, that didn't have a problem that we could solve or, or help or consult on or have a solution for. And so I think one of the most important things is that everybody needs a little bit of data up front to be able to identify at least one problem that that business has that you can solve. And having that one problem that you can solve and then offering something great value where you're over delivering in value so it really gets their attention. And you know, what I mean by that is simply saying, look, um, whatever you're offering, make sure it's almost irresistible to them to be able to say no when you first talk to them. Because you're and I, are, we're like one of 50 calls, maybe even 75 calls in a month to a CEO on all kinds of different levels of for them to buy something. So they get between 15 and 75 sales calls a month. And so we better be able to sell something really super valuable right up front. And what I try to do is, is identify that one problem and only go after that one problem and then make a very simple solution where they can literally make a decision in 15 minutes. So I like making decisions in 15 minutes as opposed to 30, 60, 90 days, uh, you know, where I've got to call and follow up. So when I get someone on the phone, I want to be able to say, hey, I see you've got a problem here and we've got a solution and let me explain what we can do it. And it's so valuable to them that 40 to 45% of the time that I have a decision maker on the phone, they're going to say yes. So it didn't have to be real expensive, but what I want them to do is I want them to say yes on the phone in my first conversation. And at worst case scenario, at least a yes to the next step in the process. Mm, yeah, that's important. Um, let me ask you, as for going back to, I, I, you intrigued me with the uh, the three pack, you know, identifying a business that has a three pack, uh, that, it, that that is listed in the three pack of Google. Can we use that just as a hypothetical real quick? Sure. Let's say you're let's say you're looking at dentists in any city. You've identified the ones that are in the three pack, right? That, that Google is featuring as the lo their local business profile or what used to be their maps profile, right? Sure. So what would them being in that three pack? What would that tell you about them? And what might what what is the uh, what's the angle that you would use to get in touch with them to make a potential offer? Just for example. Um, so there's a it's a what a brilliant question. There's a lot of different angles to go in that one as well. So, okay, so here's what we know about the three pack. Number one is if they've either the three pack, they've definitely got a company working for them, right? No one just naturally shows up as a dentist in a good size city in the three pack without having optimization. So right away, you got to realize that you're either, you're probably going to try, be trying to replacing what they already have. So if someone's in the three pack, there's a couple other intrinsic things that they'll need, which is they're going to need a really good website so that when people go to the website, right? They take action right away. So you could go to the website and you could see, do they have an opt-in page on the, from the website? Do they have reviews or social proof on the front page of the website? Do they have um, a video on the front page of the website to engage the audience? So you could go after and actually go after um, selling them a website or re-optimizing their website properly. Um, not for Google, because they're already ranking Google, I'm talking about optimization for the visitor. So you might, they might not even have Google Analytics right on their, uh, on their website. So they might be ranking, someone might did a really good job of getting them ranked, but they didn't set up Google Analytics, and so they don't know the traffic, they don't have opt-ins, so they're not taking advantage of that. Uh, another thing is reputation. I mean, if they're on the top of Google, right, they don't want, to, they don't want a bad review to show up. I mean, imagine being at the top of Google, you got a 4.5 star review, and then all of a sudden, man, your, your assistant had a really bad day, she took two people off, and boom, you got two bad reviews. So now it drops to a 4.1, which isn't that big of a deal, but what's a big deal is they go to the Google Plus listing, and the first thing they read is, this company's awful. So instead of being at the top of Google saying how amazing you are, you're at the top of Google saying how awful you are. So you can sell them reputation management services to say, look, we're going to send you alerts so that you know every single time when the review's left within four to six hours that you can address that. So if a bad review shows up, even though you're ranking at the top, you're not going to lose that traffic or that opportunity to sell. 
That's beautiful, man. And all that, all that, all those different potential angles that you can take to help them and diagnose their problem because you identified that they're already successful and already ranking in that three pack. Exactly. Well, one little indicator, and there's even more to go with on that, but just those two are powerful ways that anyone can make between $500 a month to $1,500 a month. That is fantastic. And let's let's contrast that to the, the classic style of selling, right? Which is really just having a list of all the dentists in the state and picking up the phone and calling all of them or calling or, or sending a direct mail piece to all the dentists. They or may not even care about online marketing. I mean, just from a sales perspective, what you've told us in this little tiny little interview would, would cut away 80% of the waste that anybody faces in their business and in their advertising, right? Exactly, because what you're doing essentially when you're targeting or identifying that one problem, so when you first target the market, then you identify the one problem, then what you're, hap what you're able to do is tell their story. And people buy when they see themselves in the product. So instead of having, you're right, a list of all dentists in the, the state and going, hi, my name's David and I'm a consultant and i like to help you and I know that I sound like every other salesperson that's ever called you in the last 20 minutes, but trust me, I'm different. I mean, tons of no's, tons of being overwhelmed. It's just, it's a, that's a tough sell. On the other hand, you call and say, hey, I want to let you know, um, I, I, you're just doing an amazing job being at the top of Google. You've got some amazing reviews and, and I want to call you to, to let you know that you are one of the top three businesses in the entire city. And in doing that, I also want to let you know that there's a big danger of someone leaving a bad review about you and you not knowing about it. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like for the next year to be able to help you know every single time someone leaves a review for you online and immediately send you an alert, whether it's a good review or a bad review, so that when you're at the top and you're shouting to the whole world, hey, look how amazing we are, that they don't see any bad reviews ever about you. And I like to do that for this amount of price. And when you say this amount of price, typically I would say, you know, something like that typically for the entire year would cost over $2,000. And so I'd like to give you the entire year of being able to monitor and send you alerts for this amount. And then you go, wow, yeah, that sounds amazing. So I call it my yak offer, right? It's like, you are crazy to give me that. That is amazing. Or you are crazy not to say yes to this offer. So now I'm not selling them this everything they need. I'm identifying one problem. I'm really personalizing uh, that message because so they see themselves in the product. And then I'm relating it to getting more customers, saying, look, so that you can make sure that you get more customers. Man, yeah, and I, as I as I listen to you talking, and you're of course very comfortable in your approach, David, and you're so right about an offer being the most important thing, right? Like, if you don't have a good offer that's that's worth your prospect's time to consider it, then you then no marketing in the world is going to give you clients. But going back to how we started this conversation, which is the waste of not targeting properly, of not. Uh, identifying criteria, special people that you want to go after. If you don't take the time to do that, then you could have a yak offer, right? You could have a you are crazy offer, <laughs> coin that, and it wouldn't work because eighty percent of the people you're targeting, they're not even mind, they don't even have the mindset to exactly. an offer like that, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's when that's when so many business owners, so many like well intending uh, consultants, business owners, entrepreneurs, just get so burnt out. And they say, I hate sales. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not comfortable. I can't do it. I can't take the rejection. And I think the truth of it is, David, is that if you and I had to face rejection on that level, we'd probably feel the same way. So it's not that it's not about developing your sales skills to a point where you can you can sell a rock on anything. The point is to target the right people and to have a great way of doing that so that they're more inclined to say yes, even if you're not a great salesperson, right? Yeah, dude, I, you said it absolutely brilliant. That is just, that, that's so, I like, just want to capture that. <laughs> that's 30 seconds there because, I mean, that's really it. That, that changes, it, it, does, it does so, so much more than what you said, even from an outward point of view, because there's an inward subconsciousness that happens to you. Because in our mind, what happens is, is that 
when people say no, they think they're saying no to us, right? We naturally, because we all, we're passionate, we're excited to help people, and when they say no, 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 all of a sudden we feel like it's us they're saying no to. And that's just not true. It could, matter of fact, it's the biggest lie your subconscious is telling you when they say no. They're saying no to the value that you're giving them at that point in time. And so what's happening is that when you get all these no's because you haven't targeted the right market, you haven't identified the right problems, you haven't really given a lot of value, you just talk about you and how you can help them and what you can do and you, 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 you end up telling your own story and not telling their story. So they don't see themselves in anything that, that you're saying. And when you start to do more than one type of issue, like Facebook, we help you with SEO, we can help with reputation, we can help with mobile. Then what happens is they get overwhelmed and they get confused. And then a confused mind just never buys. And so they end up saying no. And you can't figure out why they're saying no, but it's pretty easy because you haven't begin with the end in mind, which is getting the right target market, identifying the right problem, over delivering in value. And then what happens subconsciously is that your mind says, I need more. I'm not good enough. I need more information. I need to study more. I need to learn about this more. And so instead of going out and doing the one thing you need to be doing marketing, you go to the one thing you shouldn't be doing, which is going to get more information, going to the back office and learning more about fulfillment, showing up on another webinar to maybe buy another program or, or that, that one push button formula system that everybody's you know, talking about that they have that just doesn't exist. And so the interesting thing is, is most of us have been doing it all right to begin with. It's just our process has been wrong. And so that, that, that voice inside our back of our head says, instead of saying, right, I need more. I need to go buy more stuff. I need to go work on my website better. I need to go get my business cards. I need more. When you sell, it changes that subconscious voice. And you feel like, I don't need more stuff. I got everything I need. Pretty much, businesses need me. Businesses need me. Wow, holy cow. My advice makes a difference. I can help businesses. Businesses need me. And when people start saying yes to you and yes to you and yes to you, you don't think you need more stuff. You, your whole mindset changes to go, businesses need me. Wow, my advice makes a difference. And then you're, I mean, I mean, then just everything just starts to line up brilliantly because you got your, 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 the, the voice inside your head is just pushing you to go market. When you're talking to people, you're excited. They can feel that passion. You, you, you wake up every single morning loving what you do as opposed to looking at your phone and being intimidated and, you know, like, oh, geez, I'm not at this again. I just, you know, I just don't think this works. Why, why is everybody else having success and not me? And it's not, and it's not coming up with some crazy, amazing closing technique or another product. It's beginning with the right process. And when you begin with the right process, you got the right market, identify the right problem, you can personalize that communication. Man, the whole world becomes your oyster. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty incredible. I agree with you, man. Wow, well, I know you're pressed on time. I know you've gotta go. Uh, I, just wanna, I just wanna bring up one more important key here, and that is something that you and I don't have time to talk about right now, but, um, scale and automation, right? That's something that you and I are both extremely passionate about. And actually, I hope that most of the people, uh, I hope that all of the people who started listening to this interview and took notes on it, listened for this part too, because if we didn't have a way to scale and automate the approach of prospecting and marketing, then all this, frankly, I, I wouldn't have the energy to execute all this in the way that would have needed to be done 50 years ago. I mean, my results would be severely diminished because, frankly, you know, there were so, and I know you agree as well that we can innovate, we can automate, we can automate so that we can fail, so that we can work it. That way, we save our, our time, our energy from people who are serious, people who are interested in doing business with us, and we can close them rather than wasting our energy, wasting our, our energy uh, in ways that we have to deal with the rejection. So, um, I'm very, very excited. You and I are going to do a, uh, an in depth training webinar uh, in just next week, as of, as of when we're recording this. Uh, 
for those of you listening to the replay, it may have already passed, in which case we'll have a recording. Um, we've got a registration. And uh, just as a, as a nice little hint here, uh, David has an amazing, innovative automa automation suite that he has built. It's taken him years and lots of money. And uh, as a hint here, we have integrated with Contact Legend. So this is going to be extremely revolu revolutionary. This is a combination of, uh, of David's genius and, uh, and my automation and us just combining forces on something amazing. So you guys aren't going to want to miss this, uh, this special training and webinar that we've got for you. So David, thank you so, so much for making time for me. Have a wonderful trip home. Hey, thank you so much, Cassis. Look forward to hanging out with you next week. Thanks, man.